All right, so here's my uh, quick video on the reverse engineering of that chain part. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop it in. I believe it's millimeters. We'll see here in a second. Yeah, it looks like it's millimeters. Um, I'll go ahead and do a little bit of smoothing on it. Maybe just a little bit more. This one allows you to kind of preview how much you're going to be smoothing the data. Except now what I'm going to do is align this to the world. You can see it's really far away from the coordinate system. So this is something that I believe that Essentials does really well is this type of alignment of parts to the coordinate system. So I'm going to look down the center line of this part and come over to Model Symmetry Plane. Just draw a line down the middle. Best fit a symmetry plane. See that? So we're able to calculate the center line. Now another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put zero right here. So I'm going to window in this area. Actually, yeah, let's, let's do this. I'm going to window that in and say I want to do a symmetry plane of that down this axis right here. Perfect. Now for the last I'm going to assume this part right here, this top area, is a rotational. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to best fit cylinder axis rotation, or actually rotational axis there. And that will give me a good like X direction. So now I have enough to go ahead and create a coordinate system. So I'll come over to Tools, Align to World. And we'll go ahead and align it the way here I want to. So I want to align it like this. So we're going to do uh, XZ is my plane one, like that. Um, and then Let's do those two. Um, so XZ is plane one, and then let's square it to YZ is plane two. There we go. That's what I want. And then we'll do. So you can see the coordinate system floating there. Then we'll have the x-axis and line 1. Honestly, you can do this word, whatever way you want to. But what this does is it puts it in this coordinate system like that. So, and you can flip-flop these. Good enough for me. So now it's squared. If I hide this, you know, you can look at it from these different perspectives. So for this part, what I would do is just utilize the modeling tools from the great cross section. And I would just cut down the middle there. I'm going to say zero. Cut right down the middle there. There. So you can see I just cut a cross section there. Um, I will change to right there. 
will offset over about that far, about 17, negative 17 millimeters. Just so I can get that diameter. And then we'll change to XY and we'll go through zero there. And for some reference, I'll cut through these spots here. Tell me the angles there. So now, if I hide that, you'll see that I actually have almost enough. I missed one of those cross sections because I didn't hit apply. Missed the most important one. That one. So that's actually enough to reverse engineer the part. So I can auto surface this and send that over and use that for reference to reverse engineer in SolidWorks or I can uh, export these guys as um, I just file so I just save I just and make sure it exports the curve options and then we'll save So now on the SOLIDWORKS side, we'll go ahead and go to open, set it to IGIS. With IGIS, you um, usually have to click the options here and change them because they never seem to work by default in SOLIDWORKS making sure that it brings in all your curves. Now when I hit open, it'll bring in the curves. So there's my curve sections. You can see it comes in a line just like it should here. And we'll go ahead and start reverse engineering. So come in here and establish my uh, initial cross section. So what I do is I'll come in and go ahead and draw that. And at this stage you could probably just scrub in um, the timeline and probably just scrub the timeline anyway to uh, just look at the how I reverse engineer this part from here. 